Hi everyone, I'm Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. Today on Stamp TV, I want to show you a card project featuring the brand new Autumn Wishes Stamp TV kit. Let me show you the tools and products you're going to need to make this project. First, you're going to need some stamps. And the stamp set that I'm going to use is the Autumn Wishes stamp set from the Autumn Wishes Stamp TV kit. Our Stamp TV kits usually have two stamp sets, and this is one of them. Then for ink, you're going to need some fresh asparagus, faded brick, dark chocolate, cranberry tart, and craft. And of course, if you have other comparable ink colors, that's just fine. Then for cardstock, you're going to need some of the Gina K Designs, dark chocolate, some of the ivory, and fresh asparagus. And then I have an extra piece of fresh asparagus here because I'm going to show you one of the plates in the new die set that we started carrying called Allison's Ribbons. I'm just going to cut this one today, but these two work together, and I have a few cut which I can show you what this looks like as well. Now, these dies are out of stock right now. They sold out very quickly during our release, but we have a lot more on order, so stay tuned for that. They should be in probably by the end of next week. Okay, and then I'm going to use a corner rounder. I'm going to use one of our little... Uh, woodcuts. This is from the autumn leaves. Now you can use a button instead if you have a jar full of buttons or other embellishments. Or if you have something like this, this looks really cute. And then I have a little bit of our dark chocolate baker's twine. And I have a few pre-cut pieces here of the ivory cardstock. And some of the glue dots. Now the way the glue dots come now, they come on a roll, but this is still my old pack and they came on a sheet, so I'll be using glue dots. If you get the ones on the roll, they're the same. Okay, and then of course some adhesive and a pair of scissors. Now I'm going to start by cutting some of the Allison's ribbon dies. So I'm going to use the Cheery Lynn crossover machine. This is really and truly my favorite die cutting machine. It's huge. It's no doubt it's huge. It's heavy duty, but the thing that I love about it is this dial up here. You can dial the plates to be closer together or farther apart. You're actually creating more tension and pressure on the plates by by dialing. So no more shims, no more different plates for embossing versus die cutting. You have a white bottom plate and you have a clear top plate. And they also give you a silver plate that you can use if you need a little bit more pressure for a more detailed die. But I seem to not be having too many problems going about it this way. So I'm going to cut the wider of the two ribbons with some fresh asparagus. And I'm just laying the, the die face up and the cardstock on top. You can do it either way, but I kind of like to do it this way. So... I'm going to put the plate, the clear plate on top here, and then I'm going to run this through the machine. Now, I'm going to run this back and forth a couple times just to make sure that everything is cut out well. And I guess it would help if I put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing here. Let's take a look at that and see if it needs any more. Oh, that, that popped right out. So that looks good. All right, so I want to show you these. Here is one that kind of appears like a saddle stitched ribbon. And then you've got a couple of scalloped ones. I'm going to use this scalloped one here. I really like this. Now I could probably run this through a second time, but I could just pick that off. If you run it through a second time or you tighten up the pressure, then the dies will just fall right out. But I was actually using this with some embossing folders earlier, so I didn't quite dial in the pressure enough. And it has this loopy one, is really cute. Look at that, isn't that cute? And then you can just take a craft pick and just pop out the little pieces in there. There's also tools that do that, so I'm going to pop these out. I 
And in the meantime, I also want to show you what the other side looks like. Now the other side has a bunch of different options that will fill in these pieces. So let's just take this one for a second, okay? And I'll show you what they look like. This is one of the other sides. So you would just lay this right on top to create a double layered look. Here's another one that's really, really cute that comes from that plate. And you can see how you can create multicolor ribbon looks by using the two plates together. So I already have this one cut out and I don't want you to watch me poke holes. So we'll just let that go for now and get on with the card. Okay, so my next step is going to be to take these four squares and what I'm going to do is grab a little bit of craft ink and I'm going to grab this particular stamp. This is kind of like a, almost looks like a crayon scribble. It's a really neat stamp. And it can be stamped in either, well, in any direction. You can go kind of like this so the scribbles look like they're going this way or you can flip it this way or turn it completely around. So this way each one can be a little bit different. And I'm gonna stamp that with some craft ink. I'm gonna stamp one. Let's see what that looks like. I'll stamp another one. And another one. And one more. And because these are clear, you can stamp and be able to see right through to make sure that they're centered well. Okay, so now my next step is I'm going to position these so that they're opposite, so that they're not all exactly the same like that. And that gives them a little bit more interest. So now I'm going to grab some of the leaves. I'm going to use this leaf first. And I'm going to stamp that one using some fresh asparagus. So I'll ink that up. And I'll just stamp that right here, like that. Then I'm going to stamp this one using some of the cranberry tart. And the cranberry tart, when you mix it on top of this craft, it's a really pretty deep, deep burgundy red. There we go. Isn't that pretty? And then I'll show you in my finished card project. Our inks do lighten up a little bit once they're stamped. So if they look a little bit darker than the cardstock, once they dry, they lighten up to the color of the cardstock. Okay, so I'm going to do this one next, and this one's going to be in dark chocolate. Okay, and then one more, and that's going to be this one. And I'm going to do this one in faded brick. way. Okay. So there are my pieces. Now for the greeting, you can use either dark chocolate or fresh asparagus. I'm going to use dark chocolate for this card and then in my finished card that I'm going to show you, I use the fresh asparagus so you can see how each one looks. And the greeting I'm going to use is you're such a blessing. I'm going to stamp that right down here at the bottom. Like that. And then you can add a little decorative edge if you want by using the score buddy or the score pal. And let me grab my score buddy here. I'm going to do that for you. Best way to do that is 
first do it face side up where you can actually see the greeting. And I'll just choose this line here as the score line. Then you can flip it over and see where that score line is and then score it going the other way. And a lot of times I like to do a real thin one right next to that. So I'll find one of the thinner grids and I'll do two. So you can see that little bit of detail there, how pretty that looks. Okay. So for my next step, I'm going to use my corner rounder and I'm going to round the corners two corners on each one. So let me lay these out the way I want them to look. I want them to look like that. And then I'm going to round this corner and this corner on this one. And you can use any corner rounder. Some corner rounders have a bigger rounded edge. Some have a smaller one like this. I kind of like this one because it works with my Project, Li Project Life stuff. This is by EK Success, but any corner rounder you have will be just fine. Now I'm going to do the opposite two on this one. Like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on these two. So I'm going to do these two corners. And I'll do these two corners. All right. Now to assemble this, the best way to make sure that they're nice and even is to kind of measure an equal distance when you're laying these down, eyeball an equal distance to the edge this way and don't press down real hard until you know that they're all even. So I'm going to start with a little bit of tape here. I'm going to pick this up to do it because I usually have to just be hovered right over it to get it to look right. So I'll do that one there. And then this one, same way on this side. I didn't press down too hard, so if I have to pick it up and move it, that's going to be okay. All right. You really want to make sure that it's nice and even right in here. And then we'll do this one. crooked so there we go and then we'll do the last one right here and that one's easy because then you can really see where you need to place it okay so once they're all placed then press down to make sure that they stick okay now this whole panel is going to go on top of this white of uh, this ivory card base so I'll put that on next keeping an even distance around all three sides. And then you have this little part right here. And this is where I'm going to use one of these ribbon uh, die cuts that I did. I don't know which one I'm going to use. Maybe this one. I want to use a different one than my sample. I think maybe I'll use this one because that's kind of cute. Okay, so I'll put that one on. And you can just lay that on there. And once it's in place, then you can just take a pair of scissors and trim off the excess like that. This is a really neat way to have the look of ribbon in any color that you need. So these dies have been a lot of fun for me to play with. Okay, now this whole panel is going to go on top of my fresh asparagus card base. 
So I'll put that on. Now, if you don't have these dies, just use a piece of ribbon or just use a little strip of pattern paper or a little strip of cardstock. Maybe you have a fancy uh, pair of scissors with an edge that you can create a little fancy edge, but, but these are fun dies to play with. Okay, so now the last step is to add a little embellishment. And of course this card is fine the way it is. And if you had one of these fancier ones cut out maybe in a, a coordinating color, you could always fill that in too with one of the other, this is from this plate, from one of the other plates. Maybe you did it in cranberry tart or faded brick. But I'm going to leave it like that and I'm going to run this twine into this little wood cut. So let's see if I can get that to go in easily. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you see what I did? I have the ribbon folded in half and I made a little loop at the top like that. And then I'm just going to feed these two ends through the loop and that keeps your, your piece facing forward. If you tried to just tie it, it would kind of want to turn to the side. So you want to kind of keep it in the front. And then I'm going to make a little bow on the top. Like this. I have some other fun things I want to show you this month, too, using some of our, our wood cuts. These are really fun, and they're so autumn -y. Nothing like a little piece of natural wood on the card to make you think of autumn. Okay, and then just cut the little excess off. And then you can place this wherever you want. Some of you might want to put it right in the middle, like that and others might want to put it down here near the greeting or on the opposite side to kind of fill in that area. So this is what my finished card project, project looks like with this particular uh, die cut and the brown greeting. And then I made one earlier that I want to show you. This one, you can see I turned those smudgy stamps the opposite way for the bottom two, and then I used this particular ribbon die cut, and I used fresh asparagus. It's kind of hard to tell that that's fresh asparagus next to the dark chocolate because they're both kind of dark. But And you can see how the cranberry tart lightened up quite a bit from my initial stamping here, so it's a really good match to the cardstock. So that is my finished card project. I hope you've enjoyed today's Stamp TV video. Stay tuned to Stamp TV for more Autumn Wishes card projects, and thanks so much for watching.